Okay, hello everybody. My name is Vladislav Slezak. I'm a member of the YAST team. And in this short presentation, I will show you the Atom Editor, some features which I like, so maybe you can try it and use it. Um, the, the Atom Editor is, has a motto, a hackable text editor for, for the 21st century. And let's see if that's true. I have just two slides and I'll, I will show you live demo so we can see how it works. So some short interaction, Atom is a, an open source project. It was started by GitHub and currently there is large community around. And yeah, it has many ways how to extend it. They, they think of it as a modern editor, which is uh, uh, similar is if if you look at it, you will see it. It's it's similar to Sublime Text or TextMate. Actually, there is some plugin which uh, allows importing uh, syntax highlighting defi definitions from TextMate. So there are some similarities. Um, they are focused on both users, in a sense, writers who write uh, the code or text in the editor, and also on the programs who develop the packages. Uh, the editor itself, uh, extend plugins, uh, plugins, write new UI themes, and so on. And they use uh, also the term hackable to the core. So I will also show something later. Um, there, if you want to install it, there are pre-built packages at atom.io. Just there's a download RPM link. You just download it and install it. I, I, I suggest uh, to use Zipper because it has some uh, additional dependencies to packages which are not installed by default. They're just some small packages. So Zipper make it uh, easier. Or you can build it from sources, but that's quite uh, complicated. There was some Hackweek project uh, to build it in OBS, but I don't know how, how it and it, uh, I haven't seen the packages in OBS yet. And as I mentioned, it's extensible via, via plugins. Unfortunately, they call them again packages, so it's kind of confusing sometimes. And that package manager has uh, a command line tool, I APM. So for example, I will present so some packages or extensions. You would like to, to use them, so maybe this command which actually installs all packages, which I like, or mark as a star. So this way you can quite easily install a bunch of plugins to the, to the, to the base. So let's start with some demo so you can see some nice features. And one disclaimer, it doesn't mean that you should uh, draw, uh, drop your fine-tuned Emacs Vim configuration or whatever. So personally, I sometimes still use Vim because, for example, if I want to edit just one single file, one small change, it doesn't make sense to run this uh, full-blown editor. Running Vim is much faster. So it, it does not work in all cases. In some cases, using the, the old ways is still better. Um, I have opened several projects. I will switch through them because some have some, some specific features. Um, this is how the, how the Atom Editor looks. It's the usual uh, editing area with some uh, f file navigation and some menus and some status bar, just like many others have. So I will show you some interesting features which makes it somehow standing out for example, uh, I have this uh, Markdown file, which is, which means Markdown file is quite popular these days, and it is at many places at, at GitHub, especially, and we write documentation in it. So as you can see, it has nice syntax highlighting, which is nothing usual, unusual, but it has a nice feature, which is um, live preview, which means you can easily see the rendered version. 
including images and it has some nice uh, shortcuts so if you can if you want to add some some table you just write that and then you can easily add some headers change the titles and you will immediately see the result so if, if you are editing uh, markdown quite a lot it's useful especially if, if the file has some 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 huge structure many many sub items uh, tables and so on so that uh, if you can see the live uh, preview it it makes it uh, easier So, if you change something, you will immediately see some markers on the left side. Uh, green plus it means it's a it's a new code because it it tracks uh, the uh, the changes compared to to current Git checkout. So if you change something, it can it can compare it with with the current uh, head state. If you remove something, you will see minus. If you modify something, uh, you will see orange uh, bullet. And this, uh, the nice feature is that if you're doing some some changes and suddenly you you see, hey, I I want the, the original text, just uh, click click the the icon and you can easily revert back to the original state or easily revert uh, the the removed section. So if you, if you are doing some changes and you want to go back, then you can do it quite easily. Um, then it has some nice navigation, like if you press uh, uh, Ctrl plus R, it will uh, show you the, the main headers, so you can easily switch to the, to the, to the section you need, or you can even even write something and it will search so you can you can easily uh, find your section and this this indexing works also in a ruby and c++ file or or actually any file which supports this this feature or has a, a plugin for this so that means you can navigate uh, really quickly um another feature which i like is uh, is uh, open on the GitHub feature. For example, uh, in Yas team, we, we communicate uh, via IRC. And sometimes um, you need to send a, a location in a file to colleague like, hey, something doesn't for me. Do you know where is it? where is it? Or how it's defined, where is it? So usual way you would somehow point or need to find a file and put it into IRC. The nice feature is that you can you can uh, directly open on the GitHub. Um, and the most interesting thing, which I actually forgot to mention at the beginning, is that every command, uh, which is defined in, in, in Atom, is listed in, in so-called command palette. So if you press Control shift p you will see this uh, menu, and it lists all commands which are defined in Atom. That, that's a pretty nice feature, for example, in, in Vim, there are many features, but if you don't know them, then you can't find them. Or you, you have to Google and yeah, look in the manual. That's quite difficult. Here you can simply open the list and you can, you can, you can type and it will find it. So if you write GitHub, you have several options. And if there is a shortcut, you can see the shortcut on the right side. So you can land the shortcut quite easily. So here I, I use... Um, the first one, which is uh, the file. So if I press it, I will immediately see the same file and the same line at, at GitHub. So you can you can you can copy and paste uh, to IRC. And actually, you don't have to copy and paste because there is um, another option which simply copies directly uh, to the clipboard. So you can just paste it, and that's it.
Um, for many languages, there are so-called linters. Um, that means uh, while you are typing, there are some some checks uh, run behind in background. So, for example, in 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 Ruby. If you write something like this, it will immediately com complain that there is some assigned but unused variable. So if you are writing some code and you forget something, you will immediately see some 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 warnings in the code. There are even some plugins, for example, for Rubo Rubocop, so it it could immediately tell you, hey, this is there is one extra space or there is one space missing. But actually, I, I don't use it because uh, rather I, I run uh, the Rubocop auto correction and it fixes this for me. And yeah, I'm done. And another nice feature is via the doc blocker plugin. So if you uh, write the documentation commands, um, unfortunately in, the, in this file there some, some command is, but if you start like this and press tab, it will, it will immediately search for the, for the variables and you can just rewrite the default description so you can easily document your code without uh, writing and copying the, the parameter names and so on. Unfortunately, this currently doesn't work for Ruby. C++, I think Python is supported, but unfortunately Ruby, which we use in Yas, is not supported yet. Um, as I said, many many features are supported by plugins. So, so for example, there is a Travis plugin. So there is this small green icon. So again, the, if you click the details, it will immediately open the 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 lock on Travis. So if it fails, you will see a red icon there. So just clicking there, you will immediately see the lock, and you can find why why it failed, what was wrong. And the last feature I mentioned, actually, it's it's a plugin which I wrote, uh, uh, which was written by myself in in doing Hack Week. Like I'm, in in two days, I was able to do a simple uh, things, simple plugin which open links. So if you if uh, if you put your cursor uh, on some Bugzilla number. and press a shortcut, the bug number is immediately open. And it works also in the code. So if, if there is a comment in the code referring to Bugzilla, it opens uh, this, this Bugzilla immediately. And it supports uh, many other, like uh, even Fade and, and, and the other bug reporting tools. So you just press shortcut and you can immediately see what the feature is about. And that was quite easy to implement. So um, now let's uh, switch uh, to the hackability features. So um, the most interesting thing is this. It's uh, developer tool, you, pro you are probably very familiar with it, and it actually reveals how all it works, because as you can see, it's basically the, 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 the page inspector from Chromium browser. Um, that actually means that that whole thing is a single web page application running, is running inside modified Chromium environment, 
and all things are done basically in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So if you are familiar with these technologies, if you are familiar with web, with web development, then you can quite easily hack uh, on on Atom or write plugins and so on. So it's it's quite convenient and yeah, this 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 ensured that there there are quite huge of the developers or potential developers behind this. And that also means uh, you can use normal npm packages for no Node.js like that uh, Travis icon. It does not re implement whole functionality from scratch. It uses the the, the standard Travis npm uh, package and just uh, it's a small wrapper around it. So that means uh, the Travis communication has been already implemented in some package. And in this case, they just wrap it and just display the icon and, and the UI stuff. But but the core has been already there and just use the package. So that means uh, you can quite easily introduce new feature without implementing uh, the, the, this stuff around. So that means if it's um, HTML which with CSS, that means uh, you can quite easily uh, change the, the the UI if if you don't like the default style. Default style. By the way, this is not the default. The default is dark. I use this this light theme. Uh, but anyway, you can you can quite easily change uh, whatever you 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 want uh, in the UI. For example. Using this uh, navigator, you just need to find the, the correct class names uh, and so on the, the the path to the to the widget in the tree. But basically, it's just like changing the the UI in, in a web page. So I have some examples. If I uncomment this and save, then the then the uh, Status bar at the bottom changed the color to black. If I say it, uh, comment it and restore it, so yeah. Another another example is uh, is the close icon here at the tabs. You can see that that close icon, but maybe you want to change the color. You want to make it more visible. So we can quite easily change it to red color, or even make it bigger. So now it's more visible, and then you can just fine tune, make some padding at the top, so it's it looks better. So that's it. So this way you can quite easily change the UI and make it make make it uh, looking as you wish, or you can uh, define a completely new theme if you don't like the. The, the color schema you can quite quite easily create a new one from scratch. Actually, there is a, some some generator which can create a template for you, so you can create a theme package uh, quite easily. And the last example is about the cursor. So again, you can change it to red, change the width. One pixel is probably not visible, so let's make it this way. So, so you can you can you can change the UI uh, very easily. So, and yeah, that that's about changing the style. Of course, you can you can extend the functionality. Uh, by default, there is some uh, init file which is uh, loaded at the at the at the startup. I have just a short example which uh, defines some some new command. So this defines a, a new command, libsum insert, which inserts into the active text editor some, some text. Uh, for this, uh, we need to restart the editor because uh, this is not uh, loaded automatically. So we have to restart it. And then we can we can see Our command in the menu. So if if you start it, the, the the text is added there. Okay, having a command is nice. So what about having a keyboard shortcut? So there's another config file 
where you can you can d define your uh, co uh, shortcuts either for commands which don't have any uh, shortcut assigned or you can change because sometimes uh, maybe you are used to some some keyboard shortcut and you want to use the same so you can redefine and another use case is that maybe some plugins conflicts because there are like uh, currently 8000 uh, plugins and maybe some some somewhere sometimes you find that two plugins or more might conflict they use the same same shortcut so here you can uh, redefine it So we, we assign control shift Q. Restart the editor. And so now whenever we press that shortcut, the text will be added. So that's very simple way how, how to extend the editor. Um, if you want uh, to do more changes or bigger changes, it's uh, then it's convenient to, to start a new plugin. So instead of uh, changing your local configuration, you can create a plugin, which is quite easy because um, there is a plugin which generates a new plugin. So you can quite easily create a template for a new file. You don't have to start from complete scratch. Um, this is the, the Bugzilla, the mug number opener, which I mentioned earlier. Um, the last thing I like to show is that uh, if you write plugins, you can write a test for it. So if you run a shortcut, it, uh, it, will, it will start test. Unfortunately, this plugin was written like two years ago and doesn't work, or, the, or it works, as you have seen, but the test doesn't pass in the, in the latest atom. But yeah, it, there's some just initialization bug. But what I wanted to say to, to, to show is that uh, even for your plugins, you can write integration tests and you can run at them at Travis, which I do for this plugin, which is pretty cool because for many Vim or Emacs plugins, there are no tests, no way how to ensure that they work. With Atom, you can write nice plugins and properly test it, even use a uh, nice continuous integration with Travis. So whenever you get a pull request from someone to change something, you can be sure that uh, the old test still pass, so it doesn't break. So this is a really cool feature I like. So th that's basically it. Because I, I could continue uh, quite along, but I like just to show you some more most interesting parts. The best way is to simply Download and install it and try it by yourself. Um, there are some links, but yeah, I will put them into the slides so you can. Uh, because I, I already mentioned these in some of my previous blog posts, so you can look there. And if you don't have questions, any questions, please? No? Thank you.